thank you for having me and uh, I'm looking forward to having a more engaging conversation. So our today's topic is communication management and adding context uh, to the conversation. In today's current environment of unprecedented uncertainty, organizations are facing more pressure and challenges than ever before. In turn, communicators have to adjust their priorities and practice continuously, not only in the matters that they focus upon, but also on how and what of their reporting to various stakeholders. When done right, new media framework offers better insights and cements PR strategic status and the broader uh, to the broader C-suite and organizations leadership at various levels. So let me start with my own story. Uh, it began in the summer of 1999. I was working for, uh, at, for a PR agency on a leading sports TV channel account. Uh, the agency account management team met in Singapore, the channel that was Channels Asia Pacific headquarters. Uh, and it, it was for an annual review. The channel uh, was being managed by marketing and programming head. There was no communication lead for the channel. It was seen by marketing head, as I mentioned. We had an excellent outcome to showcase tier one coverage, key messages covered, the number of mentions, perceptions shift, uh, leading industry conversation, tone of conversation, a change of understanding and attitude uh, towards pay channel. And at that time, pay was a new concept uh, in the region because most of the channels in Asia Pacific region were uh, dominated by government backed channels. With a great sense of pride and confidence, we presented the findings. It was evident from the beginning of the review that the marketing had, marketing head had a one dimensional communication view. He cared very little about the quality of the coverage and to my surprise, even about the messages, uh, leading conversations, all those meant nothing uh, to him. His understanding was very obvious, was very limited of communication and PR. His interest was solely around increased subscription, program view, viewership and sponsorship. While he acknowledged our work and a uh, feel good factor, but was very lukewarm with the, output, uh, with the outcome. Not the reaction I had obviously expected at all. My reasoning that the road to increase subscription, program viewing and sponsorship goes by a better understanding and the concept of pay channel, uh, that clearly fell flat. A year of hard work and a robust outcome was really not appreciated fully. Besides the fact that review prepared resulted from hours of manual search going through tons of data as the internet was not pervasive in all the countries in the region then, uh, naturally the account management team was very disheartened. The client reaction really unsettled me. What just happened? What went wrong? And what could we do to avoid reputation that uh, reputation of this situation? It was a learning moment for me and the lessons were certainly learned. The lesson number one, C-suite, your top management team, your business partners, and even sometimes marketing leads may not have the same depth of understanding of communication functions. Uh, second lesson was, it was my job to make PR more comprehensible and help stakeholder decipher the result and take advantage of them. Third, Define KPIs, metrics, right at the beginning of the program. Determine what success looks like, great leadership. Get leadership buy-in, stakeholder buy-in. As far as possible, come to a definitive agreement before commencing a program regarding the outcome. It was clear to me that when I had to do a better job of balancing numbers and words while showing the outcome, the lesson learned holds true even today. Let me get into reputation, brand and measurement and show you how they really interplay. There are few things more critical to brand than reputation when it comes to gauging the business impact. Reputation goes far beyond just a product experience. It is all about stakeholder experience. The media plays a vital role in shaping your experience. Hence, measuring your PR program engagement, impact and outcome is critical. However, we can't view nor measure reputation in a single frame. I categorize it distinctively in three ways. 
First is the product brand. It's all about a product experience, how you are aligning yourself with full customer experience. The second is about employer brand. It's all about the employee's experience defined by a well-crafted and executed employee value proposition. It is the driver for attracting and retaining talent. And third is the citizen brand. It is how you represent your organization and marketplace as an entity that cares about the community. In an age where purpose is paramount, it is essential to measure business impact and initiatives uh, all around. Let's now dwell into numbers and beyond. Marketing has been a data-driven discipline for a long time now. Digital marketing was catalyst that drove digital analytics-led marketing measurement. Digital marketing program has enabled organizations to get enormous amount of data condensed down to a few metrics. This has increased the efficiency and their ability to display the outcome of marketing program enormously. On, on the other hand, PR as a discipline until recently has been qualitatively driven. It is more seen as an art over science that lack qualitative ROI measurement. However, things started changing from mid to late 2000s with emergence of social media. With its tremendous ability to drive conversation, engagement, capability to amplify messages, social media became a catalyst for data database measurement and outcome. The emergence of uh, communication specific analytics solutions and coupled with affordability led to increased adoption of data driven measurement. Today, measurement is a table stick. Let's understand, you know, what is the meaning uh, of measurement? What is really a meaningful measurement? As a communication measurement continues to evolve, it is incumbent upon us to expand on not just how but it is measured also what uh, is measured. It is important. Let's not just put metrics around. Identify your stakeholder needs. Educate your stakeholders on how you will measure, what success will look like, the benefits, and how we leverage analytics during crisis. Start by focusing on your business problem you're solving, and then the business strategy you are enabling. Engage your partners and your stakeholders to select and choose metrics that will showcase progress against uh, program and outreach. The first step towards a meaningful measurement is how you define KPIs. We all agree that numbers speaks for itself. Still, words help it speak louder and makes it more comprehensible by providing context and perspective. Define KPIs and metrics clearly and early. It will help you to determine what success looks like and come to a definitive understanding with your stakeholders before commencing your outreach. Define, provide a context. Define your KPR, provide a context, be it historical, be it competitive. Uh, you must analyze your data by impact against distinct milestones, events, audience, and your competition. To your C-suite, you will be able to demonstrate the success confidently. Provide them clear indicators of how much the needle has moved, increased aware, awareness, shift perception, and the level of engagement and understanding of your position by stakeholders. Today, we are well positioned to take advantage of technology to measure, drive stakeholder needs and outcome from product level to community, including players. When we are defining KPIs, it's really important for us to realize that when you are developing KPIs, create a framework for a much more meaningful measurement. For communication professionals, it is imperative to understand your organization's business strategy. This is a no-brainer to, uh, to me. Uh, help develop KPI. Once you understand the business strategy, it will help you develop KPIs framework along aligned to your business strategy and you are going to deliver against. KPI framework should be integrated, not in silos. It should help you tell a full story. Showcase a complete outcome that positions you as one of the business strategy enablers. Your KPI framework should be integrated to present how media relations, social media, paid media, events, community outreach are interconnected. 
what are providing you are providing consumer stakeholder experience through these various touch points the framework should have built in short term versus long term metrics to showcase the programs are gradually moving the needle to display the impact volumes reach impressions are less meaningful without context laddering up to your organization's business objective communicators must build a framework that connects to your organization overarching strategy and business objective reputation it's very important there is no further conversation reputation really goes beyond product it is omni dimensional reputation is credibility and respect claim that an organization ask from all its stakeholders reputation is the company's perception by all its stakeholders a diverse group compromising customers employees investors suppliers community media regulator and authority this whole stakeholder world perception makes a reputation reputation is about the legitimacy of an organization concerning a wide range of consequences including customers measuring reputation requires a broad canvas start by evaluating your reputation pillars what are the drivers impacting your reputation as i mentioned earlier understanding of communication at staff level differs there is an ongoing need to educate your leaders on the how and what of the outcome you can measure a particular program or a, or a campaign and challenge that you are addressing you can do it at the product level program level and com community outreach you can further divide them on short term mid term long term basis aligned to your business goal you can measure the impact effectiveness of your messages have these messages help shift perception improve conversation tones enhance engagement and better understanding of your position by establishing how you have moved the needle how has your communication strategy and outreach led to stakeholders acceptance of your position higher engagement better product awareness and your overall pos positive market response to your company's position these demonstrates the way you establish you are establishing maintaining and enhancing your organization's reputation measuring allows us to establish to our leaders the value and engagement we have created for with our stakeholders these provide context to measurement and outcome but measurement is not just relevant um, in normal times in times of crisis it can be a very effective tool to help you manage and navigate those crises analytics play a vital role during the time of crisis it provides you with the real time data to make decisions and necessary pivots let us begin by looking at search data who is searching for your organization from where are they searching search information also provides a great indicator of the language consumer and stakeholders are associating with your brand search terms offer incredible insight to help you get a pulse of what people are thinking and talking about your organization is your message resonating with whom is it making a credible impact analytics help you navigate crises effectively by providing you timely information and intelligence to make an informed decision it provides context to augment your decisions and finally there are three key takeaways for me communication function is increasingly becoming both critical and strategic measurement enables you to showcase the impact communication has made on your business measurement brings transparency better understanding and appreciation of the function to your stakeholders proving the return on investment exhibits how money was spent and finally proving your functions value helps executive and management team understands the role of communication in enabling business strategy and objective thank you well thanks kerman uh, that was a really nice and a crisp overview of how as communication professionals we should be approaching um, and measuring our work and a lot of learning there for us uh, food for thought um and and awesome so with that you know i have a lot of questions for you um i'm going to get right to it right um, 
Uh, yeah, so as you rightly said, um, you know, it's not just enough to put metrics in place. Uh, it's important to educate our stakeholders on how we're going to uh, measure our communications. That's important. Um, but often, you know, as a communicator, one can feel intimidated or shy even to uh, explain a typical measurement model to our stakeholders. Uh, how can we uh, start this? How can we educate them easily? Thank you. So let me tell you, uh, measurement is not a choice anymore. It is imperative. So let's begin from that premise. So as of today, measurement has become an integral to communication as much as it was with marketing about a decade ago. So and it has tremendous benefits of measurement, as I said, uh, as I shared with you earlier. And it is important for us to remember that yes, numbers uh, do speak a lot, but words, which is about the, which is what I said, how can help it to speak even louder and with right context, it helps our stakeholder really understand the larger uh, business objective we are trying to uh, achieve. So I think measurement is here to stay. It is evolving. It's getting a lot of scientific and an analytical overtone, which is really very important. And providing the framework, which is how, really helps the stakeholders to understand uh, uh, what is communication out to achieve. How do we really play a role uh, of an enabler? How do we really play a role uh, helping management achieve its business goals and objectives? Right. You know, um, when you uh, talked about ROI earlier, and you shared your experiences uh, from the sports agency days. You know, I was laughing because, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned that even after all that hard work, end of the day, it all boiled down to sponsorship and viewership. And, um, you know, the leadership didn't really understand the communication effort any other way. Um, you know, in India also, we are facing that challenge. We're in a trap that our leadership uh, demands for a monetary figure to quantify our PR work. And that uh, lays the trap for, you know, add value equivalence and uh, that. How can we break the cycle? How can we come out of this trap? So I, I believe, you know, a lot has changed even in India. And uh, if not all, I agree, you know, there will be quite a few of uh, organizations who still have the notion of uh, looking at measuring the PR outcome or communication outcome with an absolute numbers. Uh, you know, of ad equivalent, but that's where, as I mentioned to you, the third, uh, you know, uh, my learning came into is my job of helping them understand. And then I meant at that point in time, it was my customer, but now it is my C-suite, my leadership team and management at all staff that how do we really measure it? and relate it with the business outcome. So let's start by doing that. So if management believes that, uh, you know, one way of measuring is only with, uh, uh, you know, advertising outcome, drive them towards your KPIs, drive them towards the framework, drive them towards what you went out to achieve and drive those conversations saying, this outcome has really helped us, you know, shift our perception. This outcome has really helped us a better understanding of our position during a crisis situation. Or when we were launching a new product, which was the first, you had a market user advantage, but you also have to then go across and educate customers for better adoption. And that education has led down to, and today we have those tools, we have the measurement uh, technology and analytics at our disposal. So there are more than one ways to really, really uh, educate our, uh, you know, stakeholders. And, and as I mentioned earlier, I think it should begin right at the, uh, the education and that engagement and the conversation about what does measurement look like? What does the success look like? What would the outcome look like? Should start right at the beginning. You shouldn't be waiting towards the end of the year. And I would tell you, I would also, you know, stress that when you're talking about measurement, don't make this an annual affair. Let's look at a quarterly because that's a good enough time to really showcase 
how we are working, what's really working, what's really not working. So that can really help us with course correction, go back, look at the messaging, are our content pillars that we have established to achieve a certain business objective really working? Is it resonating? Uh, and with whom is it resonating? So I think there is enough room for us to engage our leaders in that level of conversation. And, and, and the more we will have this level of conversation with our C-suite business leaders, staff members, and all the stakeholders, I think you could see the conversation moving away from a very one-dimensional view, you know, view of communication outcome towards a much more broader, more comprehensive engagement. And they will start value and they will start treasuring those KPIs given the framework and the context uh, from a very different perspective. So right. what you are doing is you are actually graduating your stakeholders from a position of A to B. Uh, absolutely. You know, in fact, you mentioned uh, that one can't do or measure reputation in a single frame, and it needs to uh, take a more omni-dimensional view, right? Um, you know, how can the communications professional identify and target the most critical reputational pillars for them? Uh, what is the right way of doing that? So let, let me share you share with you my experience at PMI because that's the most recent and uh, that will be more relevant to the audience as well. So what we started doing was there were, uh, you know, PMI is going through a dramatic change at this point in time. We have a new CEO who is very dynamic. He's bringing in digital disruption within our business. And that disruption started with our own employees. So, you know, that was a big, big different new ways of working and obviously uh, providing that products and services to our customer, which were never accustomed. It's a 50 year old organization. It's a very manual. Now everything is digital and it's about experience. It's about what we are offering. So what we went across doing was we worked with our business uh, leaders, identified what are the challenges that they are addressing. And from there, we started cleaning out where does communication play a role? What kind of role would they play? And once what the outcome of, uh, you know, success would look like after we did that, we started creating uh, content pillars based uh, on those content pillars based our strategy. And within those, we started looking at creating, uh, you know, messaging. So this is the messaging we would like in each engagement to take over. And after that, we look at, uh, you know, go to market strategy in my way. Would it be, you know, uh, media relations? Would it be social engagement? Would it be events? And we created several touch points around our stakeholders, which include a very important stakeholder, which I definitely want to mention is our own employees, because this disruption was also felt first by our employees. Uh, you know, right from the way we looked at our internal systems, what does it mean? How will it really help customers? So we had to first really focus on employee, help them understand our message, help them equip them to tell a bigger, broader PMI story that they can actually go back and talk with our stakeholders. Because I personally believe employees are our brand ambassadors. They are our spokesperson. As I mentioned, they are on front line and they are interacting and they are a big part of our customer experience. So we started a focus internally with our employees and help them come up to a place where they were confident, where they understood our story, where they understood our business strategy. And then we created those content pillars and started taking it out. So it was a very comprehensive way we started rolling out the changes within an organization where obviously we had products that had uh, uh, that plays a role that we had experience and we had employees. So, you know, it was a mix of all the stakeholders kept together. Right. Uh, so, you know, I would uh, call uh, employee engagement and uh, maybe community uh, driven initiatives, not very traditional when it comes to uh, how PR used to be. So um, how does one measure these non-traditional aspects, you know, like crisis well managed and how well you were able to communicate with your employees internally? Um, can that be measured? Uh, and is there a way we can go back and tell our leadership on the work that we have done well? 
over there? So let me let me give share some experiences here. Uh, in February, most of our uh, you know customer experience events, which we would say went virtual because we uh, of the present pandemic situation. And each of these events you would see in person where we do all over the world in mostly 10, 15 cities, we'll see anything from four to 5,000 people attending. And now we are doing it virtually. So the attendance went from 25,000 to 65,000. So that's the numbers that we are looking at. But it was also a learning experience. And the first thing in, in those days, the measurement used to happen with a customer form that were given, interviews taken, making sure that it's good. Here, it was completely different. But after every event, we made sure that we have a measurement parameters in place, which was agreed by all stakeholders with a very clear objective of really learning, improving and further engaging our stakeholders. And we viewed measurement as very integral, not to make sure that we are sharing a blame or a failure anywhere, but it, is, it was really important that we are uh, looking at two objectives. How do we better engage our stakeholders and how do we internally improve our storytelling and, and various different uh, PMI experience with our stakeholders. So with events, after every event, we we'll have been going for uh, a measurement. It would be online measurement and we'll say, all right, you know, after 65,000, a minimum of 15% should respond to us for it to be more relevant statistically. And it was a mix of, uh, you know, um, open questions uh, and otherwise. So I think we got tremendous insights. We got tremendous experience. We could also look at backend analytics, who is coming in, who is going out, which, which were the uh, you know events where they actually sit for, sat for almost 45 minutes beyond the opening remark and the closing remark. And we had a fairly good understanding. So the question is, are we up there? Absolutely not. It's a journey. It's a learning experience. And we learn with each and every event uh, in every four quarters that we learn. So obviously, we put measurement right at the beginning when we started conceiving that event. Right. Uh, you know, in, in fact, fact, uh, uh, the fact that you had such an award, it's not so easy for, for other people. Maybe the communication framework can often be uh, difficult, you know, and um, it involves a lot of trial and error. It's difficult to perfect right in the beginning. Uh, do you advise that a company should first create a foolproof communications measurement framework and then start this journey? Or is it all right to start with some basic guidelines and uh, evolve it with time? Uh, is there a better approach? Yeah, so I, I don't think there's one side fits all uh, approach, but uh, rather than looking at measurement first, I would say that look at your business objectives uh, and look at your business strategy. I, I don't believe that anybody got their business strategy or communication strategy right at the beginning. It always evolves. There's always trial and error. And why should measurement be any different here? It's a learning experience. But what I would suggest we should do is once we create our communication framework and we start rolling out the program, don't make the mistake of trying to measure everything because one, it's expensive, it's time consuming. So try and look at what the most critical aspect of your business objective and your program is trying to uh, you know, address and focus on that and try and measure that I think once you start showcasing the outcome and start engaging your stakeholders in those relevant conversations, you could see that there is a bigger internal mind. Uh, your stakeholders will look at the outcome and the program itself from a very different perspective, from a very tactical to a much more strategic, and you'll find yourself getting us, uh, you know, chair on the table. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it takes uh, some thinking through uh even objectives you know on the matter of that uh, that being the first step you know if i put myself in a communicator's shoes i know that my first step is to set objectives my kpis and make them uh, tangible enough to measure but it's easier said than done it's not that simple and can often be a reason why somebody feels uh, discouraged to start this activity is there a thought process that uh, we can uh, used to start with the objective setting, how to do it? 
So this is how we went across and I'm not going to make it very complicated and difficult for uh, anybody. So at PMI, we had our business objectives uh, by the beginning of the fourth quarter. Once that was done, my communication and brand leadership team, we all came together. We created the first level of communication objectives. We wanted to really frame it and lock it down. Then we took it across to the team and we unfolded it to the extended global team communication team. We got a lot of feedback. Then we took it a level to the business team to get their feedback. And we typically had, uh, you know, annual uh, business uh, kickoff at that point in time. So it kind of started getting refined by a lot of feedback that we received. We kept on fine tuning it. And at the same time, uh, we also kept on looking at how are we going to get a measure? I think there was a tremendous room of improvement and I could feel it. So my team. So during the all hands, uh, we actually shared what our 2021 um, brand and communication objectives are going to be. We made it very, very simple and very few. We only had three objectives. That's it. We did not have a laundry list and within three, what is it that we would like to achieve and how would we enable our business? So we kept it simple. Uh, we made sure that our stakeholders really understand, have a better understanding. And we also made sure that we have a room to receive feedback even after planting it. So there was nothing that was locked down uh, uh, or cowed in the stone. We kept it open till the end of the year to receive a lot of feedback and then, you know, share our feedback as well. Right. So seeking perfection is not the best idea. It's good to begin and uh, see how it goes. Being perfect, uh, you know, being perfect from the beginning is even possible. You got to be, right. uh, you know, a genius to do that. And even there, you know, creativity uh, is subjective. So there is always going to be feedback. And the more feedback you receive and the more you incorporate, you're going to enrich your own strategy. Right. So, you know, since I'm asking some tough questions, uh, I'm going to bring the elephant in the room here. The budgets, uh, you know, uh, Sometimes communicators refrain from demanding um, budget from their uh, CEOs for communications measurement. Uh, either they feel it's too high an investment with not so much of a reward, or they feel that uh, the value of communications measurement would not be fully understood by a non-PR uh, professional. Um, how can we change this? Right. So as I mentioned, look, you know, it's a cycle. The more our target or the more our stakeholders would really understand communication, look at the outcome, we'll be able to relate to the function and look at communication as strategic, uh, you know, budgets for measurement is not going to be a problem or a big issue. But let me tell you what we do and what I would suggest everybody should do is don't look at going back to your, uh, you know, leadership team and ask for a separate budget budget measurement within your overall communication budget right right, right. Uh, uh, sometimes, then, uh, so sorry comment. and be be bold uh, be open transparent about it saying that 15 percent of my overall budget will go towards measurement and why it is important and those are the conversations, as I mentioned earlier, will get better understanding of your stated position, what you're trying to do. And, and, and be bold and stand up and say, yes, you know, we haven't performed better on those parameters that we went across. So these are the parameters that we are still lagging in key indicators. These are the ones which we are doing really, really well. And have a conversation with your management team of what you are not doing well. How can we? because it also has a business implication because communication cannot take upon everything which is a business decisions, right? Some of the business decisions regarding taxations, you cannot change those. You can, you know, put in your arguments and statement in a way that your stakeholders understand, but that does not mean they are going to buy in all the time. These are bitter pills, but at least you're having those. So have those conversations that would help shape up your leadership team's understanding of not just about your function, but about their business decisions as well. Right. Um, you know, in some cases, it could just be that the company is starting out and they really don't have 
too much uh, money to assign for PR communications campaign and then measuring it. Uh, is there a way we can make the most of a modest investment and start this? Uh, what are the things that a startup should be looking at when they start? So I, I wish I had a manual and I can open the manual and tell you that. But here, this is what I will do. If I'm spending $100 on communication, if I have $100 communication budget, $15 I'll set it aside for measurement because that $15, you know, used wisely will help you to increase your overall communication budget used strategically uh, and intelligently with your stakeholders uh, to up to $200 next year, which could be a jump of almost 100%. So, and as I said, uh, don't try and try to measure everything, be more relevant, be more specific, what can really move the needle, what will really resonate with your, uh, uh, you know, your stakeholders. So plan it out, engage them right in the beginning and throughout the journey, and I'm sure the end result will be the same. Uh, end result is going to work in your favor. Wow, right. Um, okay, so uh, a different question here. Uh, can we rely on a standard measurement model for the PR industry overall, or uh, does a company always need something which is more fine-tuned and customized to their objectives, beliefs, um, you know, their communications plan? Is standardization in communications measurement possible at all? So let me tell you, as no uh, business strategy of two organizations is similar, you know, you cannot expect uh, you know, a standard communication plan. Sure, there are certain tools that are available today. Uh, they would come with uh, basic measurement parameters and they're all very relevant. But as you start engaging them, you will have to work your way through, fine tune them, make it more relevant to your business, your business and your communication strategy. So you start with some very uh, basic standard, but then you develop your own because as I said, the content for in the messaging for my organization might be different from another organization and I have to make it much more relevant. So it, 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 you will have to really work with those, uh, you know, organization and the tools that you are using to make it much more relevant. We are into fourth quarter of using new tools and we are still further improving of how we can measure ourselves and outcome and much make it make ourselves much more relevant in the overall business. Right. right. Uh, a lot of things uh, to go over sure. for communicators out there. Uh, uh, since we are uh, just uh, about to wrap up, I'll just recap on what we have on this. Uh, you know, it's important to uh, keep things simple, start somewhere, not wait for perfection, and uh, involve our stakeholders right in the beginning of the conversation to educate them on what we are doing, how we need to measure it, how this goes back into our communications plan to help us do better, and we should demand time, attention, money uh, that it takes uh, for us to get there. Um, is there a magic mantra that you would like to uh, you know, tell the stakeholders out there uh, how they should be? Uh, I, I wish there was one. I would be using it first, but I would tell you the magic mantra is engage. Engage your stakeholders at every level. It shouldn't be just at your C-suite because Uh, almost all your employees are storytellers. But even within that, look at critical few who are making those difference in the front line, be it with customer, be it with other stakeholders, be it product leads, uh, engage them, work with them, and take them through this journey. Even if you have a million dollar budget uh, to measure, if you aren't taking them through the journey, if you're not providing the context, you're not going to be that successful demonstrating that outcome. And they and your stakeholders really appreciating what you did. So that's what I would suggest. Yeah, so thanks a lot, Kerman. Uh, that was amazing. I think uh, I learned a lot, definitely. And I'm sure so did uh, many of us out there. Uh, with that, uh, we are going to conclude the session. It was fun, it was informative, and a great uh, beginning of day one, uh, Spectra 2020. Thanks, Kerman. Thank you so much. Uh,